when Nick Saban and this coaching staff put together a recruiting plan for 2019, there was no doubt that there were going to be some some tweaking that went on from last year's class, although it certainly was solid, wasn't up to the standard that we've come to expect from the University of Alabama. Now, as we sit here on May the 7th, there's a long way to go until December, but Alabama's number one in the nation, number one in the SEC. Uh, All of their 12 commitments are four stars or better. So, so far, at least mission accomplished. Well, yeah, I think they've gotten off to a great start. And I think, you know, part of that, Gary, we've talked about this repeatedly, that I think the early signing period last year kind of created some uncertainty with, uh, you know, how to approach uh, the, the actual process with the, with the new signing period. And, uh, you know, maybe they've got a better feel for it, I think, after last year. And they've really kind of, put the pedal to the metal and gotten some big commitments. And I, and I think really the positive thing is uh, if you look at it, to me, uh, great recruiting classes are built up front. That's where it all starts. And Alabama, and I'm, I'm actually, as we're talking here, I've been putting together a, a piece on uh, for the TiderInsider.com on, you know, Alabama's start up front with the offensive line and then also – you know, their possibilities on the defensive line. And, and I think that's really what's going to be impressive uh, or ha- certainly has a chance to be very, very impressive about this 2019 class is just how strong Alabama might be up front. Last Monday, James was with you, and this is our first chance to, to visit. Of course, we were on the television show on Tuesday night, but uh, Alabama's been getting um, – Commitments left and right. I want to talk about a couple of the of the latest. Uh, let's start with uh, Amari Kite, the big uh, offensive tackle you mentioned, building it up front. He goes along with Pierce Quick from Trustful. You at Trustful High School, Knight from uh, Alabaster High School, or Kite, I should say, from Alabaster High School there in, in uh, Thompson High School in Alabaster. Boy, this is a kid that's, that seems to have it all on paper. 6'7", 310 pounds, long-armed, uh, Good feet, very athletic for his size. What do you make of this commitment? Well, he's a top 50 player, I guess, if you want to look at the ratings. Top 50 player, four-star recruit, and he's probably underrated at that. You know, I talked to Coach Freeman at Thompson last week. We would talked to him previously, and he he said, point blank, he's a five-star talent, you know, and, and that, uh, you know, he's, he's certainly got all those tools that, that you mentioned. So I think, you know, one thing, Gary, is, and a a lot of people, you know, in the state talk about, you know, getting the in-state players, and, and, you know, he's a great player in the state of Alabama. And so I think that's another valuable, you know, part of his recruitment is is that Alabama is getting a top-notch player from the state of Alabama. And, uh, you know, here's a guy that I think ranks among the top offensive tackles in the country. So, uh, you know, just a, a great to pick up an early commitment like Amari Kai. And on the defensive side of the ball, let's start with uh, Kevin Harris, the uh, defensive end outside linebacker type from Grayson High School in, in Loganville, Georgia. Great program. Uh, this is a young man. He's a good football player now, but when you look at the potential that he has to add some weight, uh, add a little size, I mean, he is one of those pass rushers that are so in demand from college programs. Yeah, his position, Coach, he's actually a defensive end in their uh, scheme over there. And his uh, his position coach is Mike Inman, was a defensive lineman here at Alabama in the 70s under Coach Bryant. And I talked to Mike last week about uh, Kevin after he committed. And, you know, he said, listen, he said, this guy is, like you said, Gary, the potential he has is, is, is off the charts, in his opinion. He's you know, so he's really, really long, athletic, you know, the kind of guys that we've seen Alabama get, the Ayabi and Nomas. And, again, I'm not comparing him to any of these guys. I'm just talking about physically in terms of the length. King Makuta is a guy in this 2019 class that, that would be very similar to that in terms of the length, his, his physical length. And, and uh, so he really was impressed with that. But Coach Inman made a comment that uh, right now uh, Kevin's rated, what, the number six player at his position in the country and he said by the end of the year he said you're going to see that this kid will probably be the number one player at his position in the country and again that's just a coach's evaluation not that those ratings really are you know 
uh, anything definitive. But the, the the fact is, the point is that uh, you know he's a great great prospect and uh, you know big pickup. Rodney Orr with us here on the Bud Light Hotline from TiderInsider dot com and Tider Insider TV. Uh, DJ Dell, the big uh, uh, nose tackle, interior defensive lineman from Clay Chalkville High School in Pinson. Boy, strong in-state flavor so far for this class too. But uh, six three, over three hundred twenty pounds, six two in that range. Um, a good football player. I know some people have compared him to Deron Payne. That might be a little bit of a stretch. I'm not sure he's quite as athletic as Deron, but we know this. Um, even in the spread offense era that we live in, you'd better have some guys on the interior of that defensive line that can can line up against certain teams and and stuff the run and also pressure the pocket from the middle of the defensive line. He has that potential. I like his build. Um, he's not a sloppy guy. He's 6'2", 330-plus pounds, uh, you know, but he has the build. Gary, a lot of lower body mass. Uh, he's the kind of guy that I think Scott Cochran can really do wonders with. You know, he may cut some weight, obviously. may lose 15-plus pounds, whatever, you know, Deron Payne had to do that. And uh, so you look at him, and when you watch him on his tape, uh, you see that he moves pretty well. He's got good mobility and agility. And, you know, I think uh, that he can play more than just the nose. I mean, I think he can be a guy you can move around on the interior, play three, the three technique, whatever. He can do a little bit more than just be a space eater. And so I really like his potential. Uh, and again, I, I'm like you, another really outstanding in-state player that I think is a, a great early pickup. Ronnie, I know Alabama fans uh, love recruiting. They love following. They love trying to, to guess who's next. Uh, anything on the horizon? I mean, I know we've got Antonio Alfano, the big defensive lineman, set to commit on May 18th. So let's let's start with him since I brought his name up. Uh, Penn State, Alabama involved there, uh, some other schools as well. But this is a guy that uh, it looks like Alabama is in really good position with now. Man, he is a great athlete. He's six four, Gary. He's close to two hundred and ninety pounds, and he's been clocked. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking about in some of these uh, legitimate camps. He's been clocked at four, four eight in the forty, which is phenomenal. You know, two hundred and close to ninety pounds, and you know he has great vertical jump. He's, cl- he's over thirty five inch vertical, so he's a tremendous athlete. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that, uh, like you said, it, it, listen, he's a five-star talent. There's no question about that. I think they have him rated on these networks as a four-star, but he, there's no question he's a five-star talent. Alabama gets him, as, as most people expect. Uh, you know, that's a tremendous pickup on the defensive line to go with D.J. Dell and Rashad Chaney out of Georgia, who, you know, they had gotten earlier. Uh, so uh, I, I think, once again, that Alabama is going to have a very, very strong uh, not only offensive line class, but th- there you see it with the guys we're talking about on the defensive line. It's going to be really strong because I think they're going they're in position with not only Alfano but a couple of two or three other guys that I think they'll bring in that'll be outstanding players, uh, outstanding highly regarded prospects as well. And we know Rodney that Alabama doesn't make a living off junior college players, but they do uh, cherry pick there. And uh, boy, this is a tough name, uh, Malasela Amave Lalua, uh, the defensive. Tackle the junior college defensive tackle Alabama. I understand is uh, offered him. I'm not really that familiar with him, to be honest with you, Gary. I don't. I don't know uh, in terms of the JUCO ranks if they'll actually take one on the defensive line or not. They're in on so many great high school defensive right. linemen. You know the kid out of Honolulu, uh, Tuatele, who is a uh, cousin of um, the Tango Valoas. You know he's a great player. Great prospect. I think Alabama's in great shape with him. Uh, in, they're in position with Ishmael Sopsher down in uh, Amity, Louisiana. But uh, you know, I think LSU is going to be make that very, very difficult. But he's, you know, Tuatelli's what the number two defensive tackle right now in the country, and, and Sopsher's rated number one. Uh, I, I think they'll probably in great position with Tuatelli. Nathan Pickering over in Mississippi, Jaron Handy in Mississippi, Byron Young uh, also in Mississippi. Those are three great players that Alabama's in on very strongly. Uh, you know, again, I, obviously you can't take them all or can't, won't get them all, but 
I think they're in, you know, excellent position to at least get one, maybe two of the kids out of Mississippi, which would be really, really big. So, uh, you know, I, I tell you another one I like, um, Gary out of Kansas City, Missouri, who they just offered last week, and he's only rated a three-star, Estenosa Rubin. Uh, when you look at him, I, I'd like for you to go look at him because I know you've been following this a long time. And, you know, I watched him last night, his tape. He's out of a, a Park Hill South a, a high school in the Kansas City area. Right. He reminds me of Anthony Smith from way back oh, in the wow. day. Yeah, you need to go watch him. Uh, just the just his get off, and you know, I think he's raw, but I think he's got a lot of athleticism. And you know, you also have to wonder how much, uh, you know, the knowledge that maybe uh, Coach Kuligowski, who was once in Missouri, as you know, his ties up there and his connections, uh, maybe that's you know, sort of uh, how Alabama found out about uh, Ruben. But he is an excellent looking player, about six four, you know, two fifty five. So not you know, great, great size in terms of the weight right now. But if you look at him, he does remind you athletically a little bit of Anthony Smith. Well, that's quite a compliment because Anthony Smith was an athletic, just havoc wrecker. I mean, that guy was a heck of a football player. I hope the Alabama fans have remember him before he transferred to Arizona and then, of course, went on to an NFL career with uh, with the Raiders. Um we, I asked you this on our television show last week, and, and, I, and again, I know you probably want to keep some spots open uh, just because everybody's not going to sign in December, but is there any reason to believe that um, the majority of this class just won't be you know, signed in December, that there'll only be just a few spots open the way it's going? Well, I think that's definitely the plan. I, I think definitely you'll see, you know, if they sign – 25 to 27, whatever it is, there's been talk that maybe they'll, they've got a couple of extras that they'll, you know, sign 27 or so. Um, you know, I, I would definitely think at least 20 or more. I could see that easily, uh, you know, come December. Again, things could always change. But as we sit here in May, it certainly looks like that that's the plan is to try to wrap this class up as much as possible uh, in the early signing period. And I think that's one thing that probably they're making an adjustment on from last year. Uh, you know, they, they went in and signed 15 in December last year. Now, of course, they were only, you know, had 23 to give. But still, I, I think that uh, this year you'll see them try to sign a higher percentage of their, their group uh, in December. Ronnie, Nick Saban said before um, or after the, the 8 day game that this, this period, and we're in it now with graduation and the few weeks that uh, uh, before – summer workouts start in June or a time when the players have to be responsible for themselves and have to uh, stay on top of things. And the guys that work hard will come back with it with a advantage. But then I saw the picture yesterday of so many of the players uh, with Scott Cochran down at IMG Academy in Florida, there getting ready to work some, some camps together. I just thought that was outstanding. It must've been 15 guys that were in that picture that are down there together with Scott, with coach Cochran, uh, getting some work in, in terms of it's all legal. Of course, they're working a camp down there, but, uh, Really pretty neat, I thought. Yeah, I, but you know, I had didn't even wasn't aware of that. You're you're telling me something that I I didn't see. I'm not really familiar with with what that's all about. But certainly, it sounds like it's a good deal. Yeah, the, Mac Wilson put out the picture. All those guys together down there down there working. Hey, listen, I want to ask you about softball because we get so many calls about it on our television show every Tuesday, probably second to football uh, as far as calls about a program at Alabama and. And we've said all along, you have to let it play out. Uh, it has not been a great year by Alabama standards, but a huge sweep this past weekend of Texas A&M, a really good team. And uh, they go to the SEC tournament now. They'll play Auburn this week in Columbia. And it looks as though uh, when all said and done, Alabama's going to host a regional again. Yeah. Well, you know, again, uh, the expectations of Alabama softball, as you know, are through the roof. And people have been uneasy all all year, well, probably the last two years, Gary. And we said last year, let it play out, and you know it ended up, you know, doing pretty well down the stretch. And so hopefully, uh, you know, they're starting to kind of hit their stride. Uh, Patrick Murphy, I think his teams, you know, usually start peaking right now. You know, so uh, again, I know it hasn't really been the kind of season that uh, Alabama fans are accustomed to, but uh, you know, as you mentioned, here we are, and they're they're Alabama sitting you know, right there where they, where they normally are in terms of having a shot at, uh, 
you know, uh, continuing to move forward. 